Okay, so let's get this styling here. I'm going to set this up uh, just after section UL here around line 52. Let's go on ahead and put on our nav, header and nav styles here. Header and nav styles. Okay, we'll give ourselves a little bit more room. There we go. Okay, so we'll start with that header, uh, the header class, and let's assign its background hyphen color. That's going to be var uh, color number five, the light yellow. So that'll give us a nice light yellow bar across the, the outside of the web page. And if we refresh, you should now see yellow there at the top. You'll also see uh, a little bit of green above that and some other things, one step at a time. Uh, that strip of green on the top is coming from the UL, which has a bit of margin associated with it, at least on my Firefox browser here. Uh, it, sometimes it's got padding associated with it instead. So we'll turn that off here in just a moment. So we'll start here with the uh, uh, header itself. And inside of the header HTML element then, we can set up some padding, like one rem, just so we don't run into the edges of our web page. We can set our max width of 1200 pixels, which we've been doing with all of the sections to this point. Now we're doing it with the header as well. We also did it with the footer. And then we can center this with margin, zero auto. So that'll push this to the center of the page and it will line up with all of our other sections in the footer very, very nicely. So to show you that that's true, uh, I don't think we're going to see a huge change here. So things sort of push over a little bit. Um, so that's how it looks now. All right, then we're on our way to our navigation. And we're going to do the universal stuff. Across the breakpoints. And so here what we're going to do is a nav UL. Turn off the bullets list style. Type none, margin zero, padding zero. They really ought to just like make a single property for all of this because you do this all the time. Anytime you're working with a list that you don't want to look like a bulleted list, these are the three things you got to do. Then uh, let's continue on here. Nav UL. Display, flex, flex flow, row wrap, and justify content, space around, space around. There we go. Space around. There we go. All right, let's check in and see how that's going so far. So if we just refresh this, Immediately, what you'll have is you have the start of a navigation bar. Uh, just by putting in that tiny little bit of flex box, uh, we remove the bullets, so those are gone. By putting in a little bit of flex box, we made the nav bar go horizontal across the page. And by using the uh, space around, or we could have used space between, that pushes everything, uh, all these navigation items. And remember, the logo is a navigation item pushes these all out evenly here on the page. So not bad so far. Uh, if you wanted at this point in time, you could do things like the following. So we could say something like nav li first child. Remember that, that uh, logo is the first child there in the navigation. We could say margin uh, right auto. So put the free space over there on that side. And if we changed our justify content to something like, I don't know, flex end, okay, 
What do you think that will do? If you have your logo, the first child, and we have a margin on the right of auto, and we're going to justify our content to the flex end, that should put the logo on the left and the navigation on the right, correct? So let's take a look at that. A little bit of work to do on those navigation items, but the shape is there, right? We have the logo on the left, we have the navigation on the right. So it's one of the cool things that we can do with Flexbox. If that is something you were looking to do, that would be very easy to do that way. Okay, but that is not what we're doing here. Okay, let me just uh, write a couple more styles here for some generic styling for these links. And then I'm going to go to the desktop and, and we'll um, continue on with the desktop particular layout. Uh, so, but we have to style up our links first here outside of the media queries. So for the links themselves, text decoration, text decoration of none. Always turn off your underlines in the navigation. Um, font size, 1.2 rem. Looks a little small, make it a little bigger. Color of... Um, Bar. Let's do color one. So we'll make them black by default. And, um, and then display block. Always display your links as block uh, when you are inside of a navigation bar. And again, this has to do with taking your link and pushing its uh, edges all the way out to whatever clickable area you're going to wind up having inside of your navigation bar. This will help with, again, fingers on mobile. It will help with uh, people with issues and disabilities surrounding their mouse being able to get to those particular items. There's no downside to this. So set your navigation uh, to display block there for the links. Uh, we'll give it some padding. So now I'm going to go all the way down here. Uh, actually, first, let me save this and show you what it looks like so far. OK, so this is what it looks like so far. We kind of got it in the center of the page. It's a little bit weird. Uh, there's some issues and things going on. We'll address all of that here in just a moment. Down here at the bottom, at the desktop media query, so 800 pixels and higher. Let's add some more stuff here. Uh, so we want to put the logo in the center. Navigation, logo in the center. So to do that, we're going to say our nav ul. I'm going to say this again. Uh, justify content flex end. I think I just set it up on the mobile side of it, but we'll eventually change that on the mobile. So I'm going to restate it down here on the desktop. Then I'm going to say nav li first child. Yes, you could do this with a class instead. Uh, but this is a very efficient selector, and we don't have to make any classes. It's the first child is the logo, so we're fine. We're going to say our flex basis is auto. We will wind up setting the flex basis later on when we're at the tablet or the mobile dimensions. Uh, so we want to turn off that flex basis for, that, for, for just the logo. And we'll set our margin to zero auto. So that'll center it. And then we'll set our order to two. So then we have our nav li nth child two and our nav li nth child three. These two elements, which again, you could do this with a class if you would like, we're going to say their order is one, and then nav, we're just going to copy that whole style again. So this will be number four and number five. We'll set the order to be three. So by doing this, we've called out our first two text navigation items. We've said that they're going to be order one. We've called out our last two navigation items and said they're going to be order three. And we set everything to do flex n. But yet, we told the uh, logo we wanted in the middle, and we set our margin to auto. 
So what will wind up happening is that our navigation will get pushed all the way out to the very edges of the navigation bar and the logo will show up there very nicely in the middle. So let's see what that looks like. Just like that. Okay, so there's, there's collections and about, then we have our wall of wonder, and then we have um, collect contact and donations.